chocolate. Just hearing that name makes me think of indulgence and bliss. And I mean, it has that glossy appearance, that classic snap, and of course that melt in your mouth texture. If you've ever found yourself unable to resist the allure of chocolate, which I have, you're in the right place because today I'm putting chocolate under the microscope, both literally and metaphorically, to discover what is the secret behind its irresistible charm. And by the end of this video, you will never see chocolate the same again. When the average person looks at chocolate, they probably see like this dark brown solid bar. But if we want to know the secret to chocolate's craveability, I need you to put on your food scientist hat. Now, don't be scared. Go grab it, put it on, because if we want to understand chocolate, we need to think about it on a microscopic level. Chocolate is actually really complex. To a scientist, chocolate is this semi-solid suspension of different particles, all held within a continuous fatty phase. Sorry, was that a lot of mumbo jumbo? I think a picture might be helpful. It will make things a bit more obvious. So let's look at a micrograph of chocolate. What are we seeing here? All right, so what's blue? That is the milk proteins. Red is the cocoa particles and black is any sugar crystals. And then you can see they're all held within this yellow phase and that's the fatty phase. That's the cocoa butter. And those are the main ingredients in chocolate, right? So it's sugar, cocoa particles, and cocoa butter if you have just dark chocolate. If you wanna make milk chocolate, then of course you have to add a milk ingredient. But it's not simply using the right ingredients because what you see in this micrograph is that the ingredients have to be arranged in a very specific way. And by looking at this more three-dimensional picture of chocolate structure, you can see it really is just those solid particles, the cocoa, the sugar, the milk, all suspended in the cocoa butter, which acts like the cement, gluing all the ingredients together to make chocolate. And what's nice is even though chocolate has these several ingredients, there's really only one we need to focus on to understand what makes chocolate so irresistible. And that's drum roll, please. Do, 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 do. Mm, I think those are trumpets, not drums. Cocoa butter! You might recognize cocoa butter not only because it's the fat in chocolate, but it's also seen in a ton of personal care products. Like if you look at your lotions or shampoos, often those have cocoa butter as the fat they use. And that's just because it's such a versatile ingredient. And to make chocolate, at least in the United States, the fat in chocolate must be cocoa butter. If you use any other fat that's not cocoa butter, it cannot be labeled as chocolate in the US. If you use a different fat like palm kernel oil, coconut oil, now this is considered compound coating, not chocolate. Although it can be labeled as chocolate-like or chocolate-flavored or chocolatey, so that's sort of the trick on how they get you. Cocoa butter is the natural fat that we find from cocoa beans, so that makes sense. But do you have any idea where we get these cocoa beans? Because it's actually pretty cool. So these grow on a very small tree or a shrub, almost called a cacao tree. And this, this tree, it grows these big pods we, ca we call cacao pods, and we crack them open and you have to get the beans out of it. That's what we use to make coffee. But you can see it's actually like a big white mucilagin-y mess when you, when you open these pods. But from the cocoa beans, what we use as cocoa butter that's just the fatty part of the cocoa beans. So we take the fat out, separate it, and that's what gives us cocoa butter. And the funny thing about cocoa butter is that it doesn't taste great. It's not like it has a good flavor. That actually comes from other ingredients in chocolate. Cocoa butter is basically tasteless. So that's not chocolate's big secret, that cocoa butter tastes amazing, has this amazing flavor. The magic about cocoa butter is actually in how it feels and how it melts in our mouths. Let me explain. Cocoa butter is this really unique ingredient, like a, a very special natural fat because it has this perfect melting profile for us humans. That's because at room temperature, which is let's say 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit for all the Americans out there, if we look at this graph, chocolate is mostly solid fat. SFC, that's just solid fat content. 
So at 20 degrees Celsius, cocoa butter is mostly solid fat. It's 80% solid fat, which is why it acts like a solid when it's in the store or at your house, right? It looks like it's a solid chocolate bar. But when we put chocolate in our mouth, when we're going to eat it, our body temperature is a lot warmer. It's about 37 degrees Celsius or 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we look back at this graph, the solid fat content of cocoa butter is now zero, which means it's entirely melted in our mouth. And this is the magic of cocoa butter. It's all about that mouthfeel. It's this phase transition of cocoa butter, which at room temperature is these solid hard crystals, but at our mouth temperature immediately and instantly melts into liquid oil, which feels very smooth and creamy. It's just irresistible. And this is super unique to cocoa butter. Most natural fats don't have this like magical ability to be solid at room temperature, but then totally melt in our mouth at our body temperature. And I wanna prove this to you. So let's look at some other natural fats and at what temperatures they melt. So this is the same graph I showed for cocoa butter, but now for some other fats, right? It's still solid fat content versus temperature. Let's look at palm oil first, or that's the line with the square symbols. So at room temperature, again, 20 degrees Celsius or so, palm oil is only gonna have a solid fat content of 10%, and that is way too low. That's gonna be basically liquid-like. If we compare that to palm kernel oil or the line with the diamonds, palm kernel oil fares a bit better. Its solid fat content is up at about 50%. So it's, it's gonna be way more solid-like than palm oil. But remember at room temperature, cocoa butter to give chocolate that, those solid-like properties, it was way up at 80%. So 50% is still much lower. Palm oil and palm kernel oil, these aren't going to act like good glues, right? This glue is gonna be way too liquid-like to make a nice solid-like chocolate bar. Tallow actually has kind of a different issue and an opposite issue. And that's because tallow, if you look at 37 degrees Celsius or the temperature in our mouth, tallow still has way too high of a solid fat content. Even once in our mouth, tallow is going to have about 25% solid fat. It's not going to fully melt like cocoa butter. Do you know what that's going to taste like? It would be like chewing wax, right? You're gonna have to chew this chocolate until you swallow it. It's not gonna melt in your mouth at all. It's not gonna give that smooth, creamy texture. So cocoa butter is really this Goldilocks fat. It's solid enough at room temperature, but then totally melts at the temperature of our mouth. There's one other factor worth mentioning here, and that's lubrication, which when you clicked on a video about chocolate, you probably didn't expect to hear about lubrication, but surprise, I think it's good to keep you guys on your toes. And that's because chocolate becomes so craveable, not only because cocoa butter melts in your mouth, but also because of how cocoa butter lubricates your tongue as you're eating chocolate. As the cocoa butter melts, it forms this thin fatty layer that coats our tongue. And it's this layer that protects us from feeling those other coarse solid particles that are in chocolate. So it's this little fatty layer on our tongue or around our mouth that ensures chocolate always has a very smooth mouthfeel to us. It's because that cocoa butter can act as a lubricant on our tongue and in our mouth. If you enjoyed this video, next I would recommend my video that explores the science behind ice cream.